World War II, from World War II up to the 20th century, part two here. All right, after World War II, the, the world of art's going to shift to New York. That's Jackson Pollock, Automatism and the Unconscious, Abstract Expressionism, Total, total Abstraction of Kandinsky into Jackson Pollock. Pollock's not in your packet, but Roth, Rothko is another one of um, color fields. Uh, but that goes to Woman, Woman One by de Kooning. All right, this is Woman One by de Kooning. New York School, abstract expressionist. Function here with modern art, what's their purpose? He's exploring the female form. He's exploring abstract expressionism and the female figure. What's it famous for? It's famous for the female figure and the um, abstract expressionist technique. Um, the form is total abstraction on the outside, but you can see the face and it's reworked. It shows the artist's work. Remember, modern art, they want you to see their handprint in the work. Connection to other female figures like Venus of Urbino. All right, this leads to The Bay by Frankenthaler. Uh, the function, she's also exploring spontaneous in art. She would pour the paint. So she's famous because she was associated with Pollock and the AE people. She's a very successful female, automatic, spontaneous artist. Form, automatism. She just flows the paint and it flows. That's Frankenthaler. Okay, Andy Warhol, um, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Diptych. All right, what's Marilyn? Um, thing with Warhol is the function is he's exploring the idea of pop art as fine art. He's exploring the idea of what is art. Can a soup can be art? If he puts it in a museum, is it art? Uh, he's famous for pop art, and he's famous for he used machines. The idea of that an artist was like a machine. He's famous for using Marilyn Monroe as a modern icon. And the form here is a diptych, which is a Byzantine religious idea. So he takes a Byzantine religious idea and puts a modern icon of Marilyn Monroe. Connection to the kiss. All right, this is Lipstick Caterpillar Tracks by Oldenburg. He's a pop sculptor. So for this one here, the function was the Vietnam War uh, protest. But he's famous for taking small items, uh, trivial items, and, and making them monumental. So this is lipstick and a tank elevated. The form, it's monumental lipstick, monumental uh, things uh, uh, such as a uh, hamburger or a cake. He basically takes everyday items and draws your attention to them. Uh, ice cream, hamburgers, lipstick. Okay, performance art is, now things are going to change. Performance art is you put the artist in the art. That's performance art. And here it's Narcissist Garden. And this here is, uh, the function is, She's exploring the idea of commerce in art and the idea of the artist in the art. Now, uh, Kusama was mentally ill and she had no shame about it. She was always a big part of the art. So as a performance artist, she'll put herself in the art. So the form here was mirror balls. Sometimes she would use water. Sometimes she would be in it and she would walk out. She would give you a, a piece of paper that said how great she was and she'd ask you to buy a mirror ball. Again, playing with the idea of commerce in art. There she is. All right, Spiral Jetty is a great example of earth art. And now, function, purpose. They're trying to take art outside the museum, give you an experience of art out in nature. So way out in the middle of the Great Salt Lake Desert, there's the Spiral Jetty. It's famous for earth art, exploring the idea of permanence, the idea of change, the idea of time. He, he wants it to change. So it deals with basically geological time. The form, it's the icon of a spiral, which is a primal aboriginal icon. And it adds a legend that it was a portal to the ocean. So he's connecting portals, connecting time, and its connection with a great serpent mound. Uh, then for, let's go to architecture 1800s. Going back, Palace of Westminster, uh, this is basically the British Parliament building. So the function is government. But it's famous because it uses Gothic form on a modern building. And the Gothic would make you think back to the simpler days. So they would do that with the Industrial Revolution, meaning the past was more pure, the future more corrupt. So they're using this kind of form in a modern manner. That's it. There's the end. It's got three pictures there. All right, Carson Perry Scott building. This is the first skyscraper. Sullivan does form follows function. That's the idea that the outside of the building reflects the inside. So down here are stores. That looks one way. Here are the offices. Looks another way. And here are machines. It looks a third way. He also had verticality, like a Greek column. And there's a side by side. Okay, so the function of this, it's a skyscraper. It's for commerce and retail and urban real estate. He's famous for form follows function. 
Different parts have different form, offices in the middle, stores on the bottom. The form is vertical because of the elevator, the steel frame, expensive real estate, and it's vertical. Looks like a Greek column. There's his floor plan, there's the store on the outside, which had wrought iron. All right, Villa Savoy is um, Le Corbusier, and this is 1929. Function, it's a home, but he's exploring a new type of home, an efficient home. His thing, his quote was, a home is a machine for living, meaning it should be efficient and should serve you well. It's a new look. It's got a modern look. So the form, it's got international style. What does that mean? Modern, minimal decoration, clean lines, geometric, similar to Carson Perry Scott or Mondrian. Okay, that's international style, international style. Less is more is the thing. It's, it doesn't have a lot of decoration. That's their motto of international style. Falling water, Frank Lloyd Wright. Function, it's a home, but he's exploring the idea of connecting nature into the man-made structure. It's famous for the waterfall, for the site. The house looks like the waterfall. He blends the organic into the man-made. Form, famous for cantilevers. These are these diving boards, and he uses organic rock and cantilevers, and he makes the house look like a waterfall. He innovates away from the international style in his own direction. There's the inside. And what a great house. Okay, amazing. All right. All right, Seagram Building. This is international style. Van der Rohe and Johnson, both very famous architects. Function, it's a skyscraper, same urban landscape, commerce, famous. This made the avant-garde normal or mainstream. Before international style was considered artsy, Seagram's, a corporation, used it, and he made the artsy mainstream international style. Form, less is more, steel, glass, modern, but somewhat like a bronze statue. You can see the bronze color there. And clean lines, geometric. All right, house in Newcastle. This is postmodern function. It's a house, but it's also trying to take architecture in a new direction called postmodern. It's famous. It's the first postmodern building house. And what that does simply is it will use old architecture in a new way. Their motto is less is a bore. It's fun. They try to decorate with nice, fun things. They'll take old architecture in a new way, like he'll have paper columns, a fake pediment. He actually liked Las Vegas. And this, he'll be very influential, and uh, that's past and present postmodern. There's Van Nuys High, and there's a postmodern school next to it. And postmodern. Okay. And there you can see postmodern. And there's uh, um, Frank Gehry's concert hall, postmodern. Postmodern on the right, international on the left. Okay. All right. That's it.